So I've been asked many, many times over the years to do a video on the best states for disabled people. I put it off for a while, then I made one, it got demonetized, and I ended up scrapping it. I started researching again and came to the conclusion that I wasn't up for the challenge. When I set out to make a video, I sort of map out where I'm going to get my information. Been doing this a long time, I know where the information is, I just have to go find it and read about it. I normally like to stay with government agencies when I can, but I often find myself down a rabbit hole or two and spend two hours on Google just reading about some weird stuff that sometimes has nothing to do with what I'm researching. After I do my script, I have researcher Ellie do the same research without knowing where I got my info. 90% of the time we come up with the same information. The schools are normally where I find the different stats. School districts have different numbers than states. States have different numbers than the Department of Education. And whenever I get an email from a teacher, apparently they're the only ones that have the right information, them and I guess the lunch ladies. I've had lunch ladies email me before. They don't like what I said about something. When I made the first video and then I made this video like four months ago, I found on the subject of disabled, Everyone has different numbers, and the numbers aren't even close to each other. So I had to come up with a better way to make this video. What I did was I looked at other lists and picked the 10 states that showed up most often on all the lists. Then I looked at the CDC to see what they had to say, and then I went to each state to see what programs or steps they're taking to make the state a better place for people living with disabilities. This video is just the facts, no jokes, no making fun of Mississippi, Arkansas, or my cousin's ex-wife. The only funny thing I will tell you before we get started, I once raced a guy in a wheelchair. I was going to run, he was in his wheelchair, and I lost. I was in shape. It wasn't even close. As he passed the finish line, I'm sure he heard me 10 yards behind him yell, Disabled my ass! That's what we're doing today. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Oregon. Oregon is always kind of like this type of state. They do a lot of things to help out veterans, people living on the street. We always have some kind of social programs, and this is no different. One problem Oregon does have, like a lot of states, is budget problems when it comes to special needs students. Oregon's special education system struggles with not enough hands on teaching and not enough eyes on everyone in the school. That's a quote from their website. But in Oregon, we have strict laws about not being fired or demoted, paid less, or otherwise treated differently because you have a physical or mental disability. A lot of states have things like that, but Oregon's are pretty strict. Many of the top attractions and viewpoints in Oregon's coast are disability accessible. We have a lot of hiking trails, and a lot of them are smoothed out so people in some sort of wheelchair can enjoy the outdoors too. 15.2% of Oregon residents live with a disability. Number nine, New York. The state of New York comes in at number nine, but the city ranks second in the world for the most disability-friendly city. That study ranked over 20 of the world's most visited cities. They included factors such as wheelchair accessibility, disabled parking spaces, and airport accessibility. I should say they tied with Amsterdam for second place. JFK Airport is considered one of the most disabled-friendly airports in the world. There was one report that said 25% of New York City's restaurants and 38% of the city's things to do activities are wheelchair accessible. 12% of New York residents live with a disability. Number eight, Washington State. Right up the coast from me is Washington State. Actually, I'm not even on the coast. I'm outside of Portland. The coast is two hours away from me. See, I've been living up here 13 years now, and I still have the mentality that I live right by the ocean from growing up in Southern California. Washington State is another state that is considered to go above and beyond what the Americans with Disability Act covers. In Washington, their version is broader and it covers more medical conditions and is not as restrictive on the conditions that people have. They're even big on temporary conditions, including pregnancy-related disabilities that fall under Washington State's protections. Now, when I tell you these things, I'm not saying other states don't have them. I'm just telling you the ones that they've usually, you know, stepped up, usually a little bit above and beyond the Americans with Disability Act. 13.1% of Washington state lives with a disability. 
Number seven, Delaware. Delaware is home to several technology and innovation companies that are focused on developing new technologies and products to help people with disabilities. They have a strong network of disability advocacy groups and community organizations that provide support, resources, and services to people with disabilities and their families. They put a lot of money into this in Delaware. Uh, their website was had a little too much reading for me, but almost every single one of the things I looked at had Delaware in their top 10. The only other two that were on every single list I looked at were number one and two on this list, and Delaware at number seven. Number six, West Virginia. You know, I'm not surprised at this one at all. West Virginia, for all its problems, they really look out for each other. They may have budget problems for a lot of different things, but they always have money to cover all the disability programs they have going. At least they try to. I'm sure they've had a budget shortfall here or there. West Virginia provides a variety of supportive services to individuals with disabilities, including vocational rehabilitation, independent living services, and assistive technology programs. The other cool thing I noticed that they have a whole bunch of different programs in place that are designed to help individuals with disabilities find employment and become self-sufficient. They're also big on giving tax incentives for employers who hire individuals with disabilities. 18.7% of West Virginia's residents are living with a disability. Number five, Maryland. Maryland has an expanded employer obligation to accommodate applicants with disabilities. They actually have like a training course that people that are involved in the hiring, new employees and the HR department that takes care of the old employees. But the state requires them to go through all this training that looks at, you know, their obligations to accommodate employees with disabilities, applicants with disabilities, existing insurance that includes employment practices, liability insurance. Just going over their website, I was amazed at how much there was going on in Maryland to help people with disabilities. 11.3% of Maryland residents live with a disability. Number four, North Dakota. You know, I gotta tell you, I wasn't expecting this one. North Dakota really just doesn't seem like a state that would be too into things like this. I mean, at least not the type of state that would go above and beyond what the ADA says they have to do. But here they are, proving me wrong. One thing that I did notice about North Dakota is they have quite a few, well, actually one really big one called NDAD, North Dakota Association for the Disabled. But that one was founded like 50 years ago. They are serious advocates for the disabled. They've done a lot of things over the years. That organization just isn't in North Dakota. They also deal with a lot of the bordering communities in the surrounding states. 12.3% of North Dakota residents live with a disability. Number three, Vermont. I expected Vermont to be on here. This is up their alley. You know, this is the type of thing you'd expect from Vermont. One thing that stood out about Vermont when I was doing the research on this is they earned international recognition for its inclusion of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in the workforce. They were the first state in the U.S. to eliminate segregated workshops entirely for people with disabilities. 13.5% of Vermont residents live with a disability. Number two, Pennsylvania. Bravo, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the party. We don't talk about Pennsylvania enough, and I really like Pennsylvania, but I'm glad they're here on this list at number two. Good job. In 2022, lawmakers were considering adding mandatory lessons that would teach students about the social, political, and historical contributions of people with disabilities in the school districts. A special committee was set up to oversee and evaluate the learning materials to be used as part of the program. 13.8% of Pennsylvania's residents live with a disability. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link for that down below. All right, on to number one. And number one, Massachusetts. Yeah, I could definitely see Massachusetts leading the pack on this one. That's like Vermont, their kind of thing. One of the things they're doing pretty good is Massachusetts has a strong commitment to inclusive education with several schools and universities offering programs and resources designed to support students with disabilities. Several healthcare providers offer specialized services to individuals with disabilities, including physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. 11.7% of Massachusetts residents live with a disability. 
All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was informative for you. I know that's not really a exciting or sexy subject, and I'm sure a lot of people won't be interested in it, but you know, I've been asked about this so many times. I just had to do it. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.